Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be talking relocation cables, specifically my up-armored relocation cables that I offer on the website. Now, relocation cable is a great way to still utilize your stock or OEM antenna, but move it out of the way and increase your mobility. But what I've come to find over the years of actually using these operationally and talking with other people who have experience using relocation cables is they really lack in durability for field use. And my solution to fix that was take all those durability techniques I used on the wearable antennas and incorporate them just right into a standard relocation cable that I produce here. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the various connectors that go into the radio end. We're gonna be talking and comparing the two types of connectors that go into your antenna end. We're also gonna talk about why I call these up arm antennas. We're gonna kind of discuss what I do to make these more reinforced. And then in here, I'm gonna include a cool little video of us blowing up a couple of these with two pounds of tannerite. And then we're gonna push away from the bench, go over to my gear tree and actually show how you would route one of these kits. Now, some of you might have seen there's 90 degree options and there's straight options. And when we're doing that routing portion, I'll explain kind of why you would want a straight or why you would want a 90 degree. And that's pretty much all on your placement. Um, and just to kind of summarize it right now, real quick, um, if you have a radio more up front, you, you want a straight so it can go over your shoulder. If you have a radio more on your side, you usually want a 90 degree and that can go through your cummerbund and on your back. All right, let's jump over to the bench and let's look at some stuff up close. So we're gonna start off by discussing all the ends that are gonna connect directly into the radio. So the two, and I would say the most popular ones that we sell, these are BNC and these are BNC male. This is a 90 deg degree variant and this is a straight variant. And like I was saying before, whether you want a 90 degree or a straight really depends on how you run your gear and, and how you're applying um, this relocation cable into your kit. Now to just give you an example, the versatility of this, and that's one of the reasons of its popularity. You could, for example, go from a military radio straight to a civilian radio with one cable, and that could save you some money if that's something you'd wanna do. And to do that, you would need a TNC male to BNC female adapter, either straight or 90 degree, depending on how you like to run your kit. And then here as an example, we have a Bofang adapter. Screw that right in if I can actually find it. And with this straight cable, go right in there. I could start relocating a um, and I don't have the O-ring in, which I should, and that's why it was hard to get off. And then here as an example is a military radio, a 152. We're going to screw on that adapter, and that same BNC can go in there. So a lot of people like um, BNC because of that. It's a great option. Now you can see there's some, some things that would add redundancy and it wouldn't make sense. For example, if you had one of these 152s with a 90 degree adapter and then you bought a 90 degree antenna, this just adds kind of some ridiculousness that just really doesn't make sense. It could work, but you're adding extra length. You're adding a larger breaking point now. And it just doesn't make any sense to do this. Now, another offering you can get a relocation cable in is TNC straight. Now, as we saw before, these are both TNC male as well, but these were the BNC adapters, so these are not compatible with this style of antenna. The only adapter that I offer on the website that is compatible with this and the squad leader wearable antenna is a 90 degree variant. So all this is doing is transforming a straight into a 90 degree, and if you're going to get a TNC modeled antenna or relocation cable, I would definitely recommend getting one of these adapters. I sell them cheap on the website. So the question I get asked is, who is TNC straight for? Um, it's for people mainly running just military style radios. I know there's some civilian offerings that have TNC ports, but for the most part, you usually are only finding radios uh, that are used in the military that are using this port. Now, yes, there are adapters that you can transform SMA male to a TNC female or a TNC male port but you're stacking adapters. Uh, there's no protective walls on those adapters. It's just a huge breaking point. The only time I would ever recommend doing something like that is if it was a stationary radio and you had a really good reason for doing that. Now I mentioned on the website before, if you're strictly only running a military radio and you don't care about quick disconnect and you want pure durability, these TNC options are great. 
one of the main reasons is B and C here is skeletonized. So the actual case head here is a lot stronger. It's solid metal opposed to that skeletonized for the quick disconnect. Another thing, and we were talking about that earlier, is the height. So when you connect this TNC straight to this military radio, comparing it to one of these quick disconnect BNC options, which you can do, remember, with one of these adapters. So let's put this adapter on. You will notice there's a height difference here. We're, com we're doing the same goal. We're completing the same goal here. We're straight connecting a relocation cable. But there's a higher height here, and that just means more of a breaking point. Right here, there's some structural weakness. Now, not to say this is not weak. This is a very viable solution. You can absolutely do it. And it's a great solution if you want quick disconnect, you want versatility for other radios. But if you are just strictly never going to want quick disconnect or never going to want a versatility of other radios, you have this durability advantage here. It's a much stronger point. And there's just that last bend. All right, let's talk about the antenna end of the relocation cable. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the durability aspect of these cables has always been an issue for me, and that's why I strive to improve them. The main reason for that is because of this end of the cable. This is where the antenna connects to, and it's normally on the back of your plate carrier, so when you're sitting down, or if you're laying prone and you gotta roll around, this offers a big breaking point. Now, when I originally started producing uh, relocation cables, the only option I was offering was TNC female, and that's because this is a very durable antenna connection point. I wanted the whole concept behind this cable to be durability. What a lot of people didn't understand was that they were ordering these for their bowfangs, and they didn't understand they would have to go out and buy a TNC male antenna like this. Now, they wouldn't have to go all the way and buy one of these expensive Harris blades. You know, this is something you would find on a Military 152, and this is, uh, you know, they sell for pretty expensive online. But there's a lot of cheaper TNC options, and it is much, much stronger of a connection point. You can just see on the thread size, everything about it is more durable than something like this. And this is SMA male. This would directly input into a stock Bofang or any other civilian small handheld style radios. Now, because I do have some customers that don't care about that, uh, they're willing to take the risk, and they want to just attach a stock Bofang, which these antennas suck, or an aftermarket uh, SMA female, which is a lot of great um, options like the signal stick. And you know you could make your own great stick antenna that has an SMA port. It's very common antenna. Uh, so I started making these in SMA male. And these are just simply screw on. You have to hold, sometimes you have to have a SMA wrench if you really want to get it tight, but it would just connect like that. And you can see this is a much weaker point. But if you're doing a lot less lighter work, uh, maybe you know, you're just casually playing a uh, uh, Milsim or Airsoft or whatever. You know, this is something that, that could hold up. If you want something serious that's actually going to, you, you're not even going to have to worry about it, and you still use a, mil, a civilian style radio, just go ahead, get a TNC female, and then just pay uh, 15, 30 bucks and buy a, a TNC male antenna. You don't have to go out and buy a Harris. Uh, there's a lot of civilian manufacturers that make um, decent ones. But this just screws right on. And once it's screwed on, you don't have to worry about taking it off. This is where it should stay for a while. You know, guys who really do want durability with their civilian style radio, and they do cho choose to go with this uh, TNC female option, they usually ask, well, where am I going to find one of these antennas? Um, if you have a buddy who's in the military, uh, I can't confirm nor deny that these are pretty easy for someone to acquire or borrow. Uh, if you go on eBay, you can find these. There's a few companies that reproduce them. Uh, you know, you can get much longer uh, three-foot whip, which is much better for VHF. Um, these blades work good for UHF. And there's also just a lot of civilian options, a lot of um, models that are just produced by a normal co normal companies because there's just there are actually quite a few TNC users out there. So what makes these relocation cables different from other offerings in the past? The main thing is durability. Um, the concept of an antenna relocation cable is it's pretty hard to improve on. It's literally relocating your antenna. Uh, but I think the durability aspect really needed that improvement. And to increase that durability, we did the multi-layer shielding that we do on the wearable antennas. So underneath all of this, 
There is uh, two types of adhesives. There's a metal jacket that's crimped on. There's a glue line adhesive jacket. There's this rubber strain relief boot. And then there's another layer of a uh, heat shrink right here that's glue lined. And that helps with uh, bump protection. Same with the antenna end. There's that same multi-layer process that we do on here. And then I'm, right now I'm gonna include in a video of these things getting blown up in the aftermath. We're starting off by demonstrating how to do a wearable antenna or relocation cable in the 90 degree variant. Now to do this with a 152, we're gonna to need to use a 90 degree adapter. Whether that's TNC or BNC, it doesn't really matter. But in this case, we're gonna be doing quick disconnect. We're gonna do a 90 degree BNC adapter here. We're gonna take our relocation cable. We're gonna actually connect it to the adapter. And from here, we're gonna to wanna to weave it through our cummerbund. Now, luckily, most cummerbunds have multiple layers of molly. That's to accommodate for a uh, side sappy carrier. So you're not gonna to have too hard of a time finding space to do this. If you already have kit or a side sappy plate bag already attached here, you can kind of wedge it in between those pouches. But what we're gonna be doing is just literally weaving it up and down through the molly, and that just prevents it from snagging. Unlike the wearable antennas where you need to be more careful how you actually weave it and space it out, the relocation cable doesn't matter how you do it. Now that I have it weaved into my cummerbund, let's flip the plate carrier around and let's install the blade. From here we can kind of do some test fitting before we make everything permanent. I noticed here that this blade when it's attached is going to be a little high up. I want this blade to be more down here, but I have this extra length. So what I'm going to do is just find more molly to attach to. On this plate bag I have back here, there's these little strips. So what I can simply do is just, oh yeah, it looks like one little weave of it, maybe two here. And now kind of shorten this up. And if you really want to get slick with it, you can actually install this underneath a plate bag. If you have a wearable antenna and you put hydration here, make sure that wearable antenna goes over the hydration. Uh, water works great at, at blocking signals. For how I have my kit set up here, I'm actually going to install this blade on the side of my pack here. I took these two buckles off and what I'm going to do here is route it into the first three little mollies here. And what I want, I don't want the end of the antenna to be all the way down because if I'm sitting down, I don't want extra tension put down on here. So I'm going to screw it in and you can see there's a little extra slack there and that incorporates exactly what I was just talking about. We're gonna push it up a little bit. So it's screwed in. We're gonna push it up just like that. I'm gonna reattach these little clasps. And then to keep it in place, what I would do here now is just put a zip tie in between here and that will hold it in place. Now we're gonna be demonstrating how you would route an antenna or relocation cable over the shoulder in a straight format. So what we have here is one of the BNC straight relocation cables. And I have my radio here in my 10 speed pouch as an example of someone who would have their radio mounted a little bit more in front of their plate carrier and where it'd make more sense for it to go over the shoulder. The first part of this process is putting the adapter on the radio. Here's a Bofang adapter and then put the radio in that pouch, which we already did. So we're gonna take our connector, we can find it, put it in we're gonna start the routing process over our shoulder. Now, before we do that, just so you know, these little Velcro ties that I uh, package all the antennas in, don't throw those out, you can use those for things. So for instance here, we could throw it on this little molly. Here on the JPC-1, they include these little front molly panels. And with that, we can do one of these. If you have any aftermarket pads, this would be the time to either take them off or, and in this case, these are pig rig uh, pads. All I got to do is just undo the Velcro. And here you have two choices. You have the lazy choice or the, uh, the much nicer choice. You can actually go under everything and make it look real clean, or you can just put it over. These will hold it enough. And what do you think we're going to do? Yep, we're doing the lazy choice. Now we got this loose cable here and we got quite a bit of length. So what we got to do is start routing it through this molly and then U shape it up underneath the plate bag. So we have our stick antenna 
on this side. You want it to go on the opposite side that you put the shoulder on. What you don't want to do, and this would work, but again, this would be lazy and it would require a bunch of zip ties to really clean it up, is do something like this. This just looks unclean and it's just, it's gonna be a snag hazard for you. What we did here was we did that U shape under the plate bag. We came up in that same spot we did when we did the 90 degree. And all we're gonna do is get that antenna down in there and screw it in. And like I said before, if you wanna make it a little bit more secure, you can use that included um, little ties, tie it up, use some zip ties to really secure it. I know how things just move everywhere when you're running in kit, especially going in and out of vehicles. So just doing your own little modification with 550 zip ties, the included little Velcro tie, all that just can't hurt. All right, guys, appreciate you for making it this far in the video. If you got any other questions or comments, just shoot them down below. Hit me up on Instagram. I'm super active there. I also have an email, cattailantennas at gmail.com. All right, bro, I'll be there. Damn, so we got 20 minutes. I said I'll be there. Sorry guys, I got Firewatch. I'm coming.